Hello everyone, how's it going? This is Intrix and I'm back again with another Conqueror's Blade video. Today I'm going to be covering the Palace Guards. In my opinion, this is a unit that has somewhat of a hidden potential that you really need to have the patience to play it, to understand it, to grind, to get it to where it needs to be to see that true potential. If you asked other players what they thought about Palace Guards, it might be pretty moot. They might not have a whole lot of great things to say. They might just say, oh yeah, it's an alright unit, blah blah blah. It's, you know, they might even refer you to another sword and shoot unit to play over these guys, and that would be pretty valid. However, Palace Guards is somewhat of a playstyle type of unit. It's more so a defensive type of unit. However, it played right. You can use it for an offensive type of attack as well. These guys definitely do have their pros. And I would say that those pros have been enlightened in Season 7 with all the additional buffs that Sword and Shield units have got. Uh, getting that extra 60% blocking and breakability. And quite a modest health improvement uh, as well will really put these guys more higher up on my list. I was starting to get fairly acquainted with them and accustomed to playing with them a lot more before Season 7 and since then it's just kind of grown on me especially with all the extra changes in Season 7. So without further ado let's just get straight into it. So as for my doctrines almost all blue. Um, I just haven't gotten any extra blue ones for the health yet. Otherwise, I would put it on there for sure. I haven't gotten any Epic Doctrines yet as well, so fortunately I cannot play around with anything uh, additional with the new metas, but for what I got right now, it seems to work pretty well. That being said, I have the Rare Doctrines that increases defense by 80, damage to all units by 95, increases block by 140, and reduces range damage taken by 10%. That in conjunction with Green Health Doctrine for 250. We go straight into the tree, look at their attributes. Right off the get-go, 12.6k health as is. Pretty impressive when you're going on the bottom tree. Um, that's a lot of health. Very generous. Uh, 235 leadership, so that's pretty much on par with all the other purple sword and shield units. Although these guys are a few points lower. Not anything crazy to go on about, but keep in mind it is 5 points lower. So it does make these guys a little bit easier to squeeze into a warband build, if you will. The speed. These guys aren't the fastest, but they're not the slowest either. They are a little bit sluggish at 4.0 speed. Keep that in mind. Um, depending on what tree you play, uh, depending on the style you play, just keep in mind that um, the speed is really going to play a factor in how these guys work. So if you're playing the bottom tree, you're playing them more as a defensive type of unit. Speed isn't going to play uh, too much of a factor into how this unit is going to perform for you. If you go with the top tree, it's more of an attack offensive type of tree. Therefore, the speed kind of will play factor because you might have to use these guys to do a little bit more ganking and all that. But we'll get into that uh, shortly. So right off the get-go here, you can see slash and armor penetration about 1400. That's pretty decent. Their slash and damage comes in almost close to 1400. Again, pretty decent. Um, they do have a blunt tack ability if you go with the top tree. Again, we'll get into that here very shortly. And then looking at their defensive attributes, um, quite a lot of piercing defense. Uh, they don't do too well with the blunt defense, but overall these guys seem pretty tanky. Um, quite tanky. So looking into the bottom tree, we'll start with that first. Right off the get-go, you get reduced damage taken by 5%. Um, then we have increased piercing defense by 3%, level that 3 times, reduces damage taken from rear attacks by 15%, that's really nice. Uh, increased block and recovery, reduces bleed damage when armor pierced by 20%, that makes them the anti nomkin unit, because there really is not any other unit in the game that has a bleed resist. Then they get increased uh, defenses against ranged attacks. That's pretty huge as well. All of a sudden, range can't do that much damage to them. Then they get some health buffs. And then this is where the unit starts getting interesting. It's their shield formation. Now this is where the sword and shield unit starts acting somewhat like a spear wall unit. Its formation is really interesting because it does open up some offensive capabilities as well as some defensive capabilities. 
it's good because you can hide behind this wall and they're going to take quite a bit of heat when in this formation as well as they're going to be able to hold their ground. They're not going to be able to do much on the sides and they're not going to be able to do anything from behind but if you stuff these guys in a crevice like a corridor something like that they're going to hold their ground quite well. Overall, these guys are still pretty tanky as is, so even if they are getting hit from the sides or from behind, you see with the bottom tree, it's quite generous in their tanking capabilities, so overall, there's a lot of interesting things you can do with the shield wall. I love it. It's a great formation, and it really starts changing the meta of this unit once you get here. The only problem is that you almost got to max the unit to actually get this, to actually understand how the meta changes. Keep in mind that with this formation, there's a bit of a notch in the middle that allows you to kind of just stand there and be able to peek over your shield wall formation. If you're a bow unit or a musket unit, this will open up the opportunity for you to kind of be able to peek and maybe get some picks off uh, through that notch. Just make sure you're not getting hit shotted when you're standing from, uh, in the middle of that notch. Then you get reduced uh, damage taken again, just a general buff. And then this is pretty huge one, increases all types of defense by 20%. So as we look at my attributes here, we see that, you know, even the blunt defense is not that high. Now imagine what it's going to be like without this 20% increase. Pretty low. So now we get into the top part of the tree. Right off the get go, you're going to get increased armor penetration. Then we have increased slashing damage. Increases the number of enemies each soldier can attack with a single strike by one. Increases critical value. Increases block and break ability, so that would be a total of 90% that adds in conjunction with the 60% they already got with the Season 7 buff. So that's looking pretty good on the offensive style of things. And then we get a nice little meta here, which is Shield Bash. Now this is a skill that's really going to uh, excel really well when you level the Tech Tree node which increases its damage output. Mine is only level one, so I didn't really get to see a whole lot of potential out of this. Still, it, it's nice to have in the offensive style of things because there is a little bit more of a, a CC and a little bit more of a hurting playstyle when you go to the chop tree. Then you get the ability to daze your enemy, increase damage dealt to infantry, which is a generous buff, and then we get all damage increased by 10%, but they do take a 5% hit as well, so that's kind of hurting. Now you notice that the negatives here at the bottom right is what my current set is on the bottom tree. It, these numbers are going to be much lower if I had this top tree leveled. And on top of that, you once you elite them, you're already getting less with that debuff. So it does hurt. It does make them a lot more squishy. They're not as tanky, even though they have 12.6k, or actually they wouldn't even have 12.6k health on the top tree. I believe they would have about 11.6 or 11.4, something around that range, just based on my current setup. So, a little bit less health, not a great big game changer, but they're definitely not as tanky, and that is a huge game changer. The amount of damage output and the CC that they do, I just couldn't justify going with the top tree. As much as I wanted to play it, I just felt like it wasn't for me. There are people that I know that I've talked to that do play on the top tree and they seem to like it. And you know what? If that's what works for you, then so be it. Me, I feel like the bottom tree has a hell of a lot more potential. I feel like the bottom tree just makes this unit shine. And even as it is, I have yet to really unlock the true full potential of this unit. But I'm getting there. I'm truly getting there. Um... Making them tankier is going to add to that sustainability. So on average, when they're slashing, they're doing damage. Even without the CC, they're putting out maybe uh, a 1,000 or 1,100 per hit. On the top tree, that was more upwards to about 1,800 per hit. So yes, they do have more damage uh, output. They do have more DPS. But the trade-off is that this unit is not going to last as long. And when it doesn't sustain as long... You're really robbing yourself of the potential of just being able to do more damage over time. These guys might not hit as hard, but they will hit more with this bottom tree. And you will get a lot more play style out of them. And overall, you'll get more reward on the leaderboard. 
These guys are ideal for holding points and even taking points. When you need units on a capture point, these guys are going to last. They can take quite a bit of heat. Even against uh, cavalry, they take quite a bit of heat. I've had Leal's Rangers rush these guys and not even wipe them. So it's pretty impressive. And having that shield wall really opens up a lot of uh, passive aggressive type of attacks. So even as is in that wall formation, they're still able to fight. So not only do they get the increased uh, defensive capabilities by being in the shield wall, but they're still adding to, to the whole sustainability. Now I'm going to get into their tech tree node. So this is pretty much how far I've gotten so far. The top tree equates to their Pearson defense increased by 15%. So this is why you're going to see my numbers a bit more inflated if you do not have these nodes leveled. The next one is the shield bash. So I've only have it leveled once. But there is potential to level this four more times to get an additional 20% on their shield bash. And I'm sure that that would really be a game changer. I still cannot justify going the top tree. That is just my sole opinion though. The bottom tree, you get increased slash and defense. So I still got two more skills to go with that one. And when it's all said and done, I'm still going to have to level this anyway, even though I'm on the bottom tree. And that's why I'm not really focusing on this, because I'm not playing top tree. I only did it to try it out just so that I have a fair opinion and I can give a fair, honest uh, insight on how I feel with how these both trees work with this unit. But I'm not staying with it. Either way, I do have to level it because that gives me the ability to unlock this one, which increases their range resistance even further which is going to allow them to sustain a lot longer to live a lot longer to be a lot more tankier so as it is right now i'm quite impressed with this unit i'm quite impressed with how much heat and damage that they can take on the battlefield and i have not unlocked their full true potential these guys will take a lot of honor to pour into this tech tree but in some way shape or form it's kind of worth it this might not be the unit that you're going to have up in the front lines doing all the dog's work. But when it comes to clutch moments, which could be the game changer, especially in territory wars. If you need to hold a point, if you need to capture a point, if you need something on a point, these guys are going to do it for you. You will definitely get your money's worth and your time and your effort and your devotion playing these guys. These are the capture point units that you want it is so impressive to see these guys fight and actually put a hurting as well as just being able to stay true to the objective and at the end of the day that's probably going to land you the mvp spot palace carrots overall i'm quite impressed with them for what they are and what they do you have to understand that these guys are not going to be the ones up in the battle fighting head to head they're going to be placed strategically and they're going to be played strategically. And when you use them, they will excel and they will shine. So with that being said, I'm going to conclude this video. I hope you like my video and I hope you enjoy watching my guides. Please like and subscribe. And there will be more to come in the following months. Until then, I will see you in the battlefield. Take care, everybody.